What is going on guys? Money Webby here back again on Wednesday with a nice full 12 game slate here tonight. A lot of good plays to choose from, but I gotta narrow it down to six of my favorite guys on the slate, my money six. So before we get going, slap up that like button if you're ready to win some money here tonight. If you're enjoying the content, I will try to get over 150 likes in this video. We hit over 200 last night, so thank you so much. Uh, yesterday was an interesting slate. I mean, John Wall absolutely pooped his pants, uh, got in foul trouble, wasn't hitting many shots, and uh, just really disappointed. But Jamal Murray, he picked up the slack. He got over 50 drafting points. Lonzo Ball did his thing. Monte Morris was solid. Trevor Reason went off. Uh, Kent Bazemore was okay. But the John Wall pick, like if John Wall p played up to his ability in that game against the Atlanta Hawks, uh, then that would have been a really the sound top to bottom money six. But we still had some really good value with guys like Ariza and Jamal Murray. So it was a, a pretty solid night, but uh, I was hoping for a little bit more. But let's see if we can have a top to bottom fire money six here tonight so let's just get into it i'm gonna go with anthony davis first up i mean he's just in too good of a spot with no julius Randle, no mirror take here tonight so he's probably gonna have a ton of opportunities a ton of rebounds going his way he can easily have a huge double double and uh just add on to that with some defensive stats as well i mean he's been balling out the last three games 66 76 and 60 drafting points and he's gonna be playing in the same amount of minutes uh, to keep this game closer and with just no really depth behind him that's like capable of playing up to the ability that Miritic and Julius Randle were. So at 11,600, I'm just going to bite the chalk and I think I'll go over 60 drafting points yet again here tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my first guy. Then I'm going to go with Derek Rose at 6,700 with Jeff Teague ruled out of this game. I think Rose can have a really nice game. It's a really solid matchup going against the Pistons. Reggie Jackson uh, is not that great of a defender. I think D. Rose uh, can ball out here again. He's been playing extremely well this year when given opportunities. And when he gets over 30 minutes, normally he's having some big games like he had 38 and 42 against some solid defensive teams in Golden State and Portland. Uh, two really solid games with over 30 minutes. 31 against Phoenix there. Um, he had 25 points, but the assists and rebounds are down a little bit. Um, probably because Jeff Teague was still playing then. Uh, but with Jeff Teague out of the lineup, Jeff Teague was honestly racking up a ton of assists. So I think Derrick Rose can see an uptick in those stats as well. And uh, the point and the assist combo will give us a lot of value. At 6,700, I think he can flirt with 40 drafting points, honestly, in this game. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my second guy. I'm going to go with Chris Dunn here at 6,300. Another nice guard that's getting an uptick in usage recently with no Zach Levine. Uh, he played pretty well against OKC, but it was just a blowout. They were down by too much. Uh, and he still put up 25 drafting points and 26 drafting points. So did he like did pretty well. And then 6,300 has a better matchup here going against the Brooklyn Nets, a team that is pretty bad against point guards. Chris Dunn, I mean, he's not a true point guard on the court, but he's pretty much handling the point guard duties in this matchup. Uh, and he balled out against the Spurs when he played uh, more minutes and that game was close. The Nets are coming off a back-to-back. -back. It's in Chicago. So I think, that, I think this game can stay close enough where Dunn will get a full complement of minutes and uh, be that like leading scorer, maybe second scorer to Markkanen. So both those guys um, really have good upset. I think Chris Dunn has a better matchup, though. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. Another, got another, uh, another guy that can flirt with 40 drafting points. So I'm going to go with Bielicha. I mean, he let me down a ton. Uh, the other night, but it wasn't really his fault. It was just that the coach wasn't feeling the game at all and pulled out the starters. He only played five minutes and uh, put up 3.5 drafting points. But I guess in one uh, good sense, they'll be rested up for this game, ready to go. It should be a very fast-paced game against OKC. It's projected to be pretty damn high scoring. And uh, one of the better matches on the court, uh, the Thunder are pretty damn good against the guards. And uh, they do struggle against small forwards and power forwards. So a guy like Bielicha and uh, maybe even Bogdanovich, if he plays, he's currently questionable. I think could have an uptick in work and uh, be maybe the two of like the under overlooked kind of leading scorers on this team. So in two games against OKC, he's shooting 10 for 12 and uh, averaging 29 drafting points. I mean, he's doing really well in the minutes he's played against his team averaging 12.6 rebounds, and he could get a few extra minutes with Marvin Bagley still out of this game. I mean, he had 35 and 29 minutes in two out of the last three games, or two out of the last four, 
before that blowout against Minnesota. So I think this game uh, will be able to stay a little bit closer in this game. Thunder on the road, and uh, the Kings, they just got like absolutely pooped on by their coach. So maybe they'll come out here with a little bit of fire, and Bielicia has one of their better matchups at a nice price tag of 4800 with really good upside. He had 40 and 41 in those two games where he got extra run. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. As my fourth guy, and hopefully maybe people are afraid to play him after what happened last game. Then we're going to go with Trevor Reza. I mean, he made me look smart yesterday with 48 drafting points. I'm going to go back to the well. This is a little bit of a revenge narrative going against his old team in the Houston Rockets. And also they do, uh, now they're not great against small forwards and stuff like that. I mean, they got Eric Gordon playing small forward on their team. Uh, he's not really a capable, like, small forward defender, I would say. Trevor Reza has more size than him some more power and stuff like that. And Trevor Reza is a guy that can get a few steals, I think, in this game. The Rockets do turn the ball over a good amount. I mean, he had six steals last night. That was like a career high for him. And uh, he's just been getting steals left and right recently with four and three before that. And uh, he had 17 shots in the game and played 38 minutes. I mean, their forward depth is still not great with Otto Porter out. And uh, he's going to be getting a ton of run if this game does stay close. And uh, 17 shots, that was probably like a season high for him. Um, which is a really good thing as well in this game. If he can hit a few more threes and stuff like that, I think he can easily get over 30 drafting points and return a lot of value. And he'll probably be a little bit of hunger in this game to prove his uh, old team wrong. The Houston Rockets, they've been kind of struggling without him this year. And uh, he can put a little salt in the wound with a nice game here again. A nice price, like a 4500 Guy that's just, that is just going to be playing too many minutes at that price tag. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. As my fifth guy, I'm going to go with Solomon Hill. This is a really kind of a risky play because you never know what you're going to get with Solomon Hill. But like I mentioned with Julius Randle and Miritic out, I mean, someone's going to have to play the minutes. And they're going against a Bucks team that does like to play some small ball. Like they got Giannis at the five sometimes. And uh, that means that Solomon Hill, I think he's going to have to be in the court a little bit more. They don't really have that um, power forward, like stretch four kind of depth instead of uh, Solomon Hill. The only kind of true backup to Solomon Hill is uh, Czech Diallo, who's more of just like a center type. Uh, I guess they could do that, um, but I feel like the Bucks will kind of force him out of that lineup. I mean, it, it could. You never know how the game flow is going to go sometimes, uh, but I feel like based on the matchup, Solomon Hill makes the most sense to kind of absorb most of those minutes left over from Randall and Mirtek. And I mean, he's been playing. Uh, a good amount of minutes still the last two games of 26 and 34 minutes. Good for 22 and 27 drafting points. And we still got him at a solid price, like a 3,900. I mean, he could see some extra shots in that kind of Miritic type of role. That stretch four and stuff like that. And his, and his rebound totals have been solid the last few games. 7, 7, 6, and 8. Um, so if he can just score a little bit more points, he'll probably get a few more shots in this game. I think he can return some solid value. At 3,900. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my final guy of the money six. You still got 6,100 remaining per player. Uh, you can put Anthony Davis at the center position if you want to kind of do that. Uh, so you got some flexibility with the, the lineup here. And uh, you got D. Rose, Chris Dunn, B. Leach, Anthony Davis, Trevor Reza, and Solomon Hill. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Drop a like if you did. Like I said, over 150 likes would be fantastic. So thank you so much. And also subscribe if you haven't already to get uh, these videos every single day. Hit the bell icon and get alerted every time I upload so you don't miss out on any videos or any content by me. So good luck on this slate. I hope you take home some money. Uh, like I always say, you can follow me on Twitter at MoneyWebby to get alerted. I mean, to get updated on any of these plays if someone is out or if an injury pops up. Uh, like say Russell Westbrook uh, picks up the flu before the game, then maybe tweet out about Dennis Schroeder and all that good stuff. So good luck, and we'll see you back here again next time.